Let's talk about that transition then. So playing for Nottingham Forest under Brian Clough, how did that come about and and um, how right. was that well, transition for you? Okay, well, I, I became a professional footballer in late 1971 uh, with Nottingham Forest. Brian Clough did not arrive until 19 to January 75. So I was a player at Nottingham Forest, as were a couple of other lads who went on to have really good careers, like John Robertson, Ian Boyer, Tony Woodcock and Viv Anderson. Viv Anderson being the first black player to play for England as well too. So these boys, we were all, think I think we were all fine players. But of course, with Brian Clough arriving in late 75, he changed our lives. And, um, and we had phenomenal success, which was not overnight, as people seem to think. Brian Clough had um, had a tough enough time managing us, I think, until uh, Peter Taylor, his assistant manager, came and joined him about 16 months later. And of course, then success after success followed for a number of years. And it was uh, it was just a, a super ride we were on that uh, ended up winning promotion to the champ, winning the what would be called the Premier League now, two European Cups, which are called the Champions League, and a number of League Cup victories as well too. So it was a fantastic ride. What was he like as a manager, Martin? And oh, you, we have, you wouldn't have, you wouldn't have. I, I, I don't think you would have uh, enough time here to describe. <laughs> Uh, he was um, simply fantastic, fantastic manager, charismatic character, uh, big news as well at that time as well. To remember, we're going back to not that many, that not that many channels on on television. So Brian Clough was uh, he was a, a major character, not just in football, but he used to appear quite regularly on uh, the Michael Parkinson chat show. So uh, that's that's how famous he was. You mentioned at the beginning that you watched um, Real Madrid and the, the white jerseys and they were very influential on you. Um, in terms of going into those European Cup finals, how did you cope with that in terms of pressure and kind of everything that you grew up as a kid looking at and, and wanting to be? How did you cope with well, that going into those, into those well, matches? Well, OK, yeah, it's a, it's, a, it's a good point. By the time by the time that we had reached the European Cup finals in 1970 and the one that I played the whole game in in 1980... I had I had plenty of experience then, so obviously nervous because you're playing in such a big game, nervous because you want to win it. That's the most important thing, and nervous because the opposition are good as well too. But I I think that third one would probably be um, would have been uh, less in my mind before. We always felt at Forest that if we were strong enough ourselves, that we could overcome teams, uh, but. Had this happened to me when I was much, much younger, I think that my, I think that the way I would have coped with it might have been different in this sense, because I think that I might not, let's just say by some, by some miracle or other, Nottingham Forest had gone on to achieve these things when I was 20, 21 and 22. I'm not so sure with much less experience behind me that I would have coped as well as I think that I coped by that time. And I'm never, I'm never really sure that you you cope all that well with them. The coping, the coping, you feel as if you've coped if you've won. You, if you've lost the game, you don't feel as if you've coped at all. Did you, you mentioned um the, the manager? Did he kind of take the pressure off you? Did he kind of motivate you in certain yeah, ways yeah, to yes, kind of think yes, differently it, it, going into those yeah, games? I, yeah? I think I I I hear this um common talk now with managers saying well, that uh, oh, they're taking pressure off the players. Um, I'm never sure. Brian Clough probably did in many aspects. He didn't really necessarily take pressure off us. He tried to relax us as much <clears> as anything <throat> else. And um, and comments that he would make both um, uh, pre-match and post-match are always designed, I, I think, with possibly himself in, in mind, I must admit. But he was, again, so charismatic that whatever he was saying to the journalists, and of course, life has changed greatly since then, whatever he was saying, the journalists would print it. You know, if, if he turned around and said, uh, let's say he was doing an interview on Tuesday and saying, well, by the way, tomorrow will not be Wednesday, but it'll likely be Thursday, that would have been printed and everybody, and uh, he would have had the journalists believing it. So I'm exaggerating to, to make the point to you, you know, for, um, but he did um, because most of the journalists really wanted to talk about him anyway. 
it was it wasn't that difficult for him to take pressure off us because uh, he didn't mind the limelight himself. 